Okay, Head Designer is a very powerful and efficient schematic capture application, but we have found that the initial setup of the working environment can be crucial to the effective use of this tool. In this webinar, we will go over the steps that I do to help our customers set up this environment. There are many ways to accomplish this, but I have found the following to be a good starting point, which you can then modify in whatever ways you want to after starting it. This presentation, as well as the recording, will be available after the webinar. And in the presentation, we sometimes add an icon to the upper right corner with a link to additional material available on Mentor Support Center. You can use either the recording or the presentation to follow the steps for your own setup. I always start out by recommending this document on Support Center, DX Topics, Best Practices for Using DX Designer. It includes some of the suggestions we'll be covering in this webinar, including links to support materials for the topics. I'm clicking here around the thing in the corner to show you what the actual document looks like. You can see here that there's multiple material available for you on this particular tech note. And so I recommend that you go and save that link in your system. Now let's move on to setting up your libraries. We'll start with a discussion of what is in a component library. For each component, there needs to be a schematic symbol to represent the component on the schematic, a layout footprint to define the component on the PCB, and a definition of the connectivity between them, how the pins on the schematic connect to the pins on the footprint. There can be other information associated with a component, such as parametric data, value and tolerance, for example, a company part number, data sheet links, manufacturing and manufacturing part number, and even simulation information. In the netlist flow for pads, the symbol and footprint information are maintained in separate libraries, and the symbol footprint connectivity is either defined by properties on the symbol or by the definition of a part in the layout library. You can see the two separate libraries in this graphic. The required symbol properties can be maintained on unique symbols for each part or added to generic symbols with the Databook link to a component database. We recommend Databook as a more efficient way of saving and maintaining the component information. As we mentioned, the symbol footprint connectivity is in the layout part definition, either already present or created with the schematic netlist. In the integrated flow, the symbol footprint and connectivity are all maintained in a CAD central library. In this case, a single library is used and multiple libraries are represented by partitions in this central library. For this presentation, we're going to be using pads as the example uh, for the setup. But if you want to set up for pads professional or even expedition, just follow the instructions that we'll be talking about for the integrated flow. Although other component information can be stored in the central library, we recommend that it be created and maintained in a separate database linked by Databook to the schematic. Databook provides an easy access to these component properties, which can be customized to the needs of engineering. It also can provide easy access to other sources of component data with links to the company's PLM, MRP, or ERP systems. It can use a standard Microsoft ODB Sling Link, and it has three primary uses. To parametrically search for and place either generic or unique components on the schematic. To verify that the schematic and component information is correct. And to enable easy access to other component information that is not on the schematic, a link to a data sheet, for example. Databook allows you to look for and choose parts easily using Boolean search capabilities, view and select the schematic symbol, and view the PCB decal even for your design from the schematic interface. You can select the desired part in the interface and easily drag it onto your schematic. Now let's continue with the library setup. For the Netlist flow, you will want to gather together all the sources you have for symbol libraries. 
This could be from existing libraries or from libraries translated from other sources. There is also a starter library included with your software installation. I recommend you include from this starter library in any case, at least the borders, built-in, and global directories. These include some default designer symbols that will be useful. There is also an ODPA starter library that can be downloaded from the support center. For the integrated flow, you will have a single central library with multiple partitions. You can combine sources of symbols and footprints using tools, PADS library tools and PADS designer, or with the central library migrator. You can also use one of the starter libraries or start from scratch using the central library migrator to create an empty library. In any case, if they are not already there, I recommend you copy the borders, built-in and globals partitions into the created library from the starter library using PADS library tools. For this example, we are copying the libraries that are included with the installation, the symbol library directory for the netless flow and the starter library directory for the integrated flow. Next step is we're gonna create a design template. You will also need to set up a data book database and the data book configuration file that defines the mapping between the database and the properties in PADS. For the netless flow, this database should include a device property, often the company part number is used, and a package type property which defines a footprint. For the integrated flow, the part number property is the key that links to the CAD part definition in the central library. Data book setup is beyond the scope of this webinar, so I recommend you search for DX Topics Data Book on Mentor's Support Center for more information, or you can click on the link in the upper right-hand corner of the presentation. For this example, we'll use the data book database and configuration available in the copied libraries. Template project files establish a default project settings for new projects. By including INI files in the template directory, you can also ensure that all new projects start with the same initialization files including borders.ini and specialcomps.ini. To set up a custom design template, open PADS Designer and create a new netless project. You can see that there are design templates included with the installation. Select the PADS netless template named PADS and give it a name. This will create a project based on the sample library included with the installation. Note the location of this project. In this case, we've created a project called Tem Netless Template. Next, what you want to do is you want to copy for the netless flow the constraints support file. This file is located in the installation directory for the version you're using under standard ISIS. And, and this default constraint file should be copied into the newly created project. This file maintains initialization settings for the constraints. If you want to maintain constraints in the schematic, that you then pass on to layout. Okay, next we're gonna take and define the custom company support files for the netless flow. From again, the installation directory under the directory standard, copy the netless.prp file and the pads100.cfg file into the corporate W location that was created on your computer. Okay, now these files are available to be edited uh, by and used by all users in common. For the integrated flow, the previous copied PADS 100 CNS file and these support files are contained within the central library. Update the project design settings in the netless flow. Go into setup settings, project, and customize the settings. You can see here that the settings are originally for the uh, netless uh, PRP file and the constraints and configuration file are pointing to files that are again in your installation directory. I've said you do not want to edit any files in your installation directory because they will be changed when you do an update of the software. So what you want to do is you want to update these settings so that they look like this. Again, pointing to the files that we copied into your corporate WDR location on your system and using the local PAS100.CNS file that we copied into your project. Next, we're gonna go on and we're gonna update the design settings for the uh, libraries. Again, as you can see here, with the project that we created, all the libraries 
are pointing to libraries that were on the installation directory. We want to change this so we're pointing at the libraries that you have set up on your local corporate directory library uh, selection. In this particular case, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the PRJ file is a text file. So what that allows me to do is rather than having to go into the tool and, and manually edit each one of those libraries to point at the new library path, I'm just going to go into the PRJ file in a text editor like Notepad or WordPad, and I'm going to find the path that is, is showing the installation directory and change it to the path of the libraries that we copied into our corporate WDIR location. So I'm going to find and replace all of them in the system. Okay. Now what you should get is something that looks like this. And you can see the pointers have now been changed uh, to the new location in the design. Now, if we want to create a design template for the integrated flow, we, we follow a similar process. We go and open Pad Designer. We create a template project using the Pads template underneath the Pads integrated section. Okay, and then we select the library that we copied in the previous steps. So for the integrated flow, we, in this particular case, we created a project called Integrated Template. To update the project design settings for the integrated flow is easy. There's no changes necessary in the project because it's already pointing at the new library location and the other setup files came from, came, come from that library. Again, the special comp borders and files are using the local versions of those particular files. Okay. The last thing we need to do in terms of setup is to update the setting for the data book. So again, because we already have a data book set up in here, I'm going in and choosing Pads data book under project, and then I'm going in and editing that to point at the WDIR corporate location in the libraries file for the starter library.dbc file. The last step we need to do on the computer is to create an ODBC link for that particular data book database. So I go into my data book window in, in Paz Designer. I use right mouse button, configure, edit configuration to open the configuration file. That's the DBC file that's being used to map the data book data to the system. As you can see here, the ODBC link name that's being used is starter library. So I need to make sure that that ODBC link is set up on my computer that I'm working with. To create this link, I go into the uh, ODBC data sources program. In Windows 7, I usually have to search for it. I find it under Windows SysWall64 ODBC AD32.exe. In Windows 10, it's a little simpler. I can just search for ODBC with the search, search function in Windows 10, and I'll see the ODBC data sources 32-bit application come up as a choice. I select that, and then I get the Microsoft Access setup window. I choose a system DSN, choose the word add, and choose a Microsoft Access driver for MDP, and then finish. What you'll see then is the screen you see on the right-hand side here. I browse with the select window to, to the starter live.mbd, the database that I'm going to be using, and I give it this data source name that we found when we looked into the DBC file. In this particular case, it's starter library. Okay. So now we're going to go on and we're going to create a design template for your company. Okay. We're going to store it into the WDIR path. For the Netlist flow, what you want to do is you want to create a directory under your corporate directory called Templates DX Designer Netlist. Into that particular directory, you want to copy the netlist.prg file from the test netlist job project that we set up. You can rename it if you want. In this case, I renamed mine to my template underscore nl.prj. The next step is to create a directory with that same name and copy the support files that we have locally stored in the project. SO borders.ini, SO specialcomp.ini, and PAS100.cns. 
Those are copied into the subdirectory, my template underscore NL in this case. Okay. You can copy these support files directly into the Netlist directory if it, you're using the same support files for all templates. But creating a subdirectory like this allows you to be able to have customized choices for support files for different templates that you might set up. If I want to set up a um, template for the WDIR path, this, the process is very similar. I create directories and copy the integrated template.prj file into my corporate WDIR templates DX designer under a subdirectory called pads. Okay, again, I can rename it if I want. In my case, I've renamed it mytemplate.prj. I create a directory of the same name and then copy the support files from the project into that directory. Notice I don't need the pads 100.cns file, again, because it is included in the central library. Okay, support files all can also be copied directly into the directory, if the same for all templates as before. Okay. The last step we're going to do is we're going to test the template setup that we made. Okay, so what I want you to do is close and reopen Pad Designer, and then use File New Project. And you should see your newly created templates. In this case, my my template underscore nl under the pads netlist section, and my template under the pads integrated section. I'm going to choose the my template underscore nl for the test. I'm going to create a test project, and then I'm going to open that test project up. If I go into the setup settings for this test project, you'll see that all the settings should be set up the way that I defined them in my template directory. So you can see I'm using the local SL underscore specconf.ini, borders.ini, and of course the busconf.ini files. My netlist.prp file is the one that's located on my corporate WDR location, so that if we edit it, those changes are maintained, even if we update the software. And we're using a custom constraints file that's located lo locally in the project, pads 100 at CNS, and we're using the custom configuration file for pads that was copied into our corporate WDIR location. Okay, I then go file, new board, and a new schematic page with the border should be created. This is sort of testing out the connections that we've defined with the different support files. And then I go on and I test databook. I open up a databook window, and I look at one of the libraries, in this case, capacitor, and you'll see here, when I highlight one of the components of that design, I can see not only the properties associated with it, and I can, but I can see the symbol as well. If it's possible now to take and drag this component right onto the design that we're working with. So in this case, we've been able to successfully create an environment that you can work with. It's a basic structure for Paths Designer. And I recommend you use that as an example for creating whatever custom changes you may make, want to make, modify for your own company. Either different libraries, different border symbols, different uh, uh, special components or things like that. You can take this company WDIR that we created and copy it to your network. Of course, modifying the templates is needed because some of the paths within the templates may have changed. And then you can add this company WDIR path to each user's WDIR environment variable. That means that any user who opens up pads schematic, pads designer, is going to see the setup files and the template files that you've created in this particular exercise. I hope this has been helpful to you. I thank you all for your time.